said, my name is David Brooks. I uh, do a lot of things at the BPI. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the BPI, what we do. Um, we've been in existence for about 15 years, and we're the largest certification organization for compostable products. Uh, we have about 150 registered manufacturing companies and another 50 or 60 authorized resellers who buy from those manufacturing companies and then market under their own brand name. And so we maintain a chain of custody of all those interrelationships and we also administer a certification process, uh, which I'll tell you about in a second. So there's two existing standards in North America that are widely recognized uh, by composters, ASTM D6400, which is plastic products, and D6868, which is poly-coated, poly-laminated paper products, and also a lot of fiber products get put into there. Uh, the, the program itself is basically, uh, it works for North America, for United States and Canada, and then for uh, Canada only. There's a special logo that we have uh, just for our neighbors up north. So let me tell you a little bit about the logo. This is the heart of the program. Uh, the first thing we like to stress with consumers is that this product is only meant for commercial and industrial facilities. We don't encourage people to put this in a backyard composter. We specifically tell them um, that don't assume that an industrial facility is nearby, check first before you buy the product. Uh, all of our members have signed a license agreement and we're very, very cautious about misrepresenting the product, you know, greenwashing. We don't want to be accused of that, so we've taken kind of a conservative approach and the labeling kind of reflects the fact that we're telling people up front, please check before you buy this product, make sure that you can actually compost it in an industrial and commercial facility near you. Because the testing, the ASTM testing is not reflecting typical backyard composting, we specifically tell people, don't buy this product and assume you can put it in your composter. It may or may not work. The temperatures and the, the, the processes that happen inside a home composter are not as, as standard as they are at a commercial facility. And so our products uh, and our members' products were tested to go away in a commercial facility, but not necessarily in a home compost. It might work, but we're not encouraging you to try. And then finally, and this is kind of a new development, I'll talk about this in a second, we have a unique identification number where if you're a little bit skeptical or concerned, you can actually go to our website and look up that item code and satisfy yourself that that member is current and is certified for those products. So we're establishing at least a certain level of trust and simplicity with the consumers, and I'll talk about that, why that, we think that's important. So the organization itself is created to have independent science-based standards for making compostability claims. And uh, for composters, it's, it's an opt-in program. It is a tool that you can use to try to get at more waste streams that have a lot of food waste in there. But it's a way that you can tell your, your waste generators and also the general public, look for a logo and only choose those products to go into the brown bin. The composter is at, you know, as, uh, completely up to you whether you take compostable products or not. We're just giving you kind of a tool and a built-in quality path so that you can be sure that the products should go away in your process. And the other value, that kind of why a lot of our member companies exist, is to help target large concentrations of waste that have food in it. So events, food service, uh, cafeteria waste, uh, sporting arenas, things like that, and also eventually into the household. And this is Dick Lilly from uh, Seattle Public Works, who basically, you know, kind of looks at that and it, it reinforces what we believe is our true value, is it's a tool to allow composters to act to get more food waste in there with minimal contamination from regular non-degradable plastics. The other part of, about the BPI process, though, is sustainability. And some people like to talk about sustainability in terms of preventing things from going to the landfill, organic recycling, but there's another type of sustainability, and that has to do with what people are expected to do every day. You know, day in, day out, week, week after week, month after month. A sustainable program means that the program is easy for people to participate and follow. So the best program will fail if people are confused or skeptical about it working. The best program will fail if composters don't believe in the process and don't believe that the product will actually work. It, the programs, the waste diversion programs that are out there 
will not be sustainable if you don't have buy-in from consumers and you don't have buy-in from composters. And so we felt that the logo program that we have and, and the integrity behind that logo program is absolutely essential to have sustainable landfill diversion programs. So keep that in mind, that's, that's why we designed the program and that's how it operates. That's all of our agreements with all of our members have that in mind. So this is a, a series of slides. This was a, done by a consultant, uh, Dave Douglas from Vision Quest up in Canada. And he talks about, you know, this is the yuck factor, <laughs> you know. And so several municipalities inside Ontario gave consumers a choice about having a, a curbside container for organics. And either you can have no liner, a paper liner, or a compostable uh, certified, BPI certified bin liner. And he talks about the yuck factor in terms of the mindset for consumers. When consumers were given a choice and they started using the compostable bin liners, they generally diverted, they participated 10 times more frequently than uh, if they had participated without a liner or with paper. And the reason is, is it prevents the yuck factor. You don't have a lot of the, the heavy liquid waste that are dripping down there, staining the, the, the compostable bin, I mean the, the, um, uh, the cart. And even with paper, it's, it can work, but if it gets too soggy and too wet, it's gonna break, it's gonna tear. So they, they noticed there was like a 10 time better compliance rate just by giving people a certified bag option. And then this talks about just the amount of, of diversion that's possible when you use bags versus when you don't. So the aggregate effect of people not wanting to participate because of the yuck factor versus it's easy and simple to participate and you're not interrupting a lot of consumer behaviors because you're giving them a clean bin and a clean liner and the, the, that liner will go away in a compost facility. So that's, that's something else to keep in mind is making it simple and easy for consumers to participate. There's a program, uh, Bob Spencer runs a program down in Brattleboro. Uh, he, I called him last week on vacation and he gave me a couple of uh, updates there, but it's the same kind of story there where it, there's a clear list of what you can throw away. It's a voluntary program, so people are motivated and educated. Uh, BPI products are, certif are, are included in this. His report to me was that the contamination rate from all types of inorganics is far less than 2%, but not quite below 1%. So I, I took them to mean about one and a quarter percent, but that's kind of more precise than I think most people would, would want to be. And he's hoping to expand the program this summer and go to maybe 2,000 households. So it's, it's, a, it's an effective program because you're giving people a choice, you're educating people, and you're including substitutes for plastic products that they have grown accustomed to. So we're just gonna give you an update of where we have been and where we're going as an organization. We had a logo uh, that was sort of non-specific. Rather than um, being parochial about it, we decided to kind of open it up and make it as, as uh, inclusive as possible. And I gave you the, uh, the explanation before about what we do here in terms of the certification number and the, the things like that one. It's also bigger, and be, we used to require certain le uh, legal disclaimer language next to the logo. We've now kind of incorporated in there. So there's actually, it takes up less space, which is like a big deal if you're making a little, little box of forks or something like that. The other thing we did, and this is a little more interesting, on the left is a counterfeited certificate. And what we realized, it only happened once or twice, but we saw the writing on the wall. And so when we certify a product, we issue a certificate, letting the buyer know that the product was certified by us. Some people have scanned it and Photoshopped it and put their own name on there. And it, they were very crude attempts, but we decided, okay, we're gonna put a stop to that one. So we went to an all digital signature. Uh, it's encoded, it, there's a unique ID number that's on there so people can double check. The signature is digitally signed, and it's, it's harder to forge. It's harder to, um, uh, to counterfeit. So that's, that's something else. We're trying to stay one step ahead and keep a certain amount of integrity with the program. As mentioned before, we have a web-based catalog where you can go there. There's, um, at any given day right now, there's about 4,500 products there that are listed by different category. You can look up, if you're a buyer, you can look up multiple different suppliers. If you are a consumer, you can look up by the certificate ID number and you can be, verify the status. If someone tells you that they are compostable, ask them to prove it. And this is one way to do that. The other thing that we think is of value is to stop people from thinking about compostability as a, uh, as a consumer uh, attribute and start thinking about it in terms of 
Is it a tool to diverse, wa divert waste from a landfill? Um, and so th there's this kind of debate where we get calls, you know, maybe like once or twice a week from someone who thinks that it's a really good idea to have a compostable dog bone or a compostable cosmetic case or a compostable uh, bottle for liquid laundry detergent. And we try to politely but firmly tell them that, no, those are really not good ideas. <laughs> and, you know, well, why? Why? Well, so we walk people through this, and I encourage you to go to this website, bpiworld.org, decide. And we walk through a decision tree. And it basically asks people to kind of justify why is it you want it to be compostable? Is it just because you think you're going to sell more products? Is it a nice greenwashing name? We don't want you. We don't want to put our logo on products that are frivolous and are not really contributing to a solution. We absolutely don't want to get calls from composters saying, Dave, why are you sending me this cosmetic bottle? Why are you sending me this laundry detergent bottle? Don't you know there's, there's, there's residual chemicals in there that are going to kill the, the compost? You know, those are the things that we try to prevent. We try to make sure that you're not taking a lot of, of frivolous things, but you're taking it's a, it's a mechanism to help collect more organic waste, where plastics are contaminating that waste stream. And through substitution, we can make it a lot easier to process that waste. We've also worked very closely with the United States uh, U.S. Composting Council to work on model legislation. And so I know that, like here in Vermont, there's, they're contemplating, uh, there's a landfill diversion uh, ban and a diversion on uh, uh, food scraps. But in addition, I think there's probably some interest in having a, a proper definition about what is compostable, what is biodegradable. Should you allow people to even use the term biodegradable? So we've worked with the USCC to develop labeling guidelines and model legislation. And if anyone has any contacts within the state legislature, please send them our way. We'd love to help. Uh, there are a lot of unscrupulous people or a lot of commercial interests that would like to redefine what biodegradable is. And it's probably going to be not something that a composter is going to want to support. So it's very important to make sure you get the ear of, of a lot of the legislatures to make the legislators to make sure that they understand what's at stake so that you're not saddled with problems. So just kind of a quick summary. We believe that our mission is to replace non-degradable plastics that are otherwise contaminating a very rich organic waste stream that goes into compost. And by providing clear, concise labeling, we can make it easier for consumers to do the right thing and hopefully convince composters that this is a good thing to start asking buyers to buy and choose the right products to go into those waste streams and ultimately for those products to be labeled properly so consumers can buy them for, for household programs. There's my contact information if you uh, follow us on Twitter and if you have any questions, you know, obviously just give me a call. Thank you.